So you need some passives for your next design. Maybe an inductor or two. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> Into the heart of data sheet land. Before you know it, you've had two cans of soda, the cleaning crew is finished with the office, and you're still plowing away. But what about this other one? It has the inductance I need, but the current rating isn't right. And this one, well, it has two things, but core permeability? What even is that? Now I've got to figure out the saturation current DC resistance. Ah, uh, just make it stop. <laughs> yep, it's the return of passive rubble stiltskin. We've all been there a time or two, right? Choosing the right passive for your next design can be a hassle, taking way longer than it should in the first place, and then you end up buying the wrong one because it's three in the morning and you haven't had anything to eat since that power bar at lunch. And then there was that one time with the blue smoke. Yeah, you get the picture. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Choosing the right passive can be a big ol' hassle. But fortunately, there's an expert on the way. A red expert. <laughs> Please welcome Heberly Atalan from Worth Electronics, and he's bringing the goods on Worth's new Red Expert Intelligent Component Selection Tool. With a little help from Mauser Electronics that can make choosing your next passive easier than ever before. And maybe this time you can leave before the cleaning crew arrives. For once. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find more information about Red Expert from Worth Electronics. Hi, Heberly. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so when I'm choosing passives for my design, it's always such a huge pain. The website can list out hundreds of components, and I really don't feel like downloading and reading the entire data sheet for each one to figure out if it meets all of my design constraints. So I understand you guys have something called Red Expert that can help me with all of this? We do. We have a Red Expert that can help you with this. Awesome. Okay, great. But before we jump into the details, Heberly, where does the name Red Expert come from? Well, red is the color of the company. It's one of our prime colors that we use in the logo. And expert because we're expert at pass -ups, so we can definitely help you out using the software. Great. That's just what I need. All right. Tell me about it. How do I get to this red expert? It's a pretty easy software to use, very intuitive. And we embedded the software onto the Mouser website, which I think is a great benefit. And it helps you select components doing all the calculations automatically. And you can select components in real time and you can look at data in real time. So I think it would be very helpful to walk you through it so you familiarize yourself with it. Okay, I got it. So let's get started. Say I'm choosing an inductor. Walk me through the process here. Sure, so let's say you went through the website, you narrow it down to one component, and you're wondering, gosh, Will this inductor work for my application? Will it get too hot? Will the ripple current saturate it? Is it the right size? Is the footprint with the right tolerances that I need? So you have all these questions. The software, if you click on the red arrow, will take you into the software that will help you answer questions like this. Great, I was wondering all of those things. Okay, so boom, I'm at the website and I have several panes of information. Heberly, what exactly am I looking at here? So as you can see, it's a very cool software. It has a number of windows and window panes where you can read information about the components very clearly. We added a very interesting section where you can see whether there is a stock in mouse or of the alpha component. Okay, good to know. And you can actually see a little bit about the different parameters that are necessary to select the component. 
So it's broken down into a list that looks a lot like an Excel spreadsheet. And you can filter all this information via the titles of each column. And then we also have what we call an article table, which gives you more details about each parameter, such as the height, the nominal inductance, the rated current, saturation current, temperature rating, such things. Okay, got it. Now, can you walk me through that top pane in more detail? Sure. So when you're looking at this top pane, you'll see a list of components that it basically is unsorted. It's a raw list of components. So if you already know what you're looking for, say, for example, you're looking for a 47 microhenry inductor, no problem. You can actually go to that particular column where we list the nominal inductance and you can filter out all the 47 microhenry inductors that we have available that will help you narrow down the list from thousands of components to a few hundred components or even tens of components that we have available. In the article table, you can click on that little white box that you see next to the title of the column, and that will bring up a pop-up window where you can enter a range, a maximum and a minimum. And with that, you can sort out the components that you're looking for. So you can put in, for example, a maximum current, or you can put in a minimum current, or you can put both and then narrow it down to a very precise current value, or a very precise height, or a very precise footprint or a very precise RDC is your choice. We have all the components listed there clearly so you can pick out the ones that are of interest to you. So I can put a range in and it will filter down to just the parts that meet my constraint? Exactly, that's the main idea, to save you time and make it easy for you. So Heberly, what's that big URL at the bottom? Yeah, that's a great question. So the URL, it's meant if you are an adventurous designer and you want to manually enter all the parameters directly into the URL address. So you want to put, for example, the minimum and maximum, you can enter those directly into the URL without having to use the interface in the software. So if you know what you're doing and you want to get more adventurous, you can type in everything on the URL and it will immediately do that for you. Select the components without having to click anything on the website. Okay, I have a few contenders and earlier it looked like I could drop them into the product tray. Is that right? Then what happens next? Yeah, so the product tray is pretty cool because if you looked at a bunch of components and maybe you have a hundred of them and you want to maybe just focus on three or nine of them, for example, you can just drag the part number directly into that product tray and just look at those as a focus products that you want to work on. For example, in this case, you can see that we've selected six components. Three of them are grayed out. Three of them are in black. Why are those three grayed out? Well, simply because in your original filtering, maybe they were not falling within the parameters that you need. So they are grayed out and they're just for reference there in case you wanna look at them later. But the ones that the software is suggesting as the best solutions are still in black. Okay, the graying out is nice because I don't wanna accidentally buy something that doesn't fit my constraints that I talked about earlier. Right, right, so that's the main idea. Basically walk you step by step without having to make any mistakes. Cool, and I can drop the ones I want directly into my Mauser shopping cart? That's correct. If you already selected something you like, you can just click on the right. You'll see a drop-down menu that first will tidy up the products. So if you have products that were there and they were grayed out, you can tidy up and basically remove them from your list. And you're left with whatever you want to add on your shopping cart. And you can add all the ones that you have on that list. Or if you just want to add one or two, it's totally okay. It's up to you. Wow, that's great. Okay, so what if, hypothetically speaking, of course, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Can Red Expert give me a little more expert help? Right, it can, actually. That's a great question. I think this is where our software gives you the greatest benefit. If you're really unsure and you want to get more advice on what components to select, if you actually are designing, for example, a power supply, we have some options already built in into the software, such as a buck converter, a boots converter, or a SEPIC design, and even you can calculate losses in real time using the software. If, for example, you're designing a buck converter, 
click on the design tool pane and it will bring out this window where you can enter all your inputs, outputs, switching frequency, diode drop, output current, and the software will go out and select the components that fit that particular design and give you some options. From there on, you want to select the ones that fit your footprint and your perhaps your height into the product tray. And if you have, for example, any filters already preloaded from a previous try, all the parts that don't work for this design, just like you see there, they will be actually just dotted lines. It means that they are there for reference, but they are not desired products for this particular design. But anything that works will be a solid line. Oh, okay, that's cool. And that goes way beyond just a simple part selector. Now, earlier you showed me some nice comparison graphs. How do I get those going? Yeah, so the comparison graphs are there to give people more insight into the particulars of one component versus another. So for example, you can see here we have three components, all color coded, and you can use a hair cursor to look in more detail at a particular inductance at a particular current. So you can find out in more detail whether the inductance is the value that you need at a particular current value. Furthermore, if this looks too small for you, you can always maximize it. So just click on the white box that you see above and that white box will maximize the entire graph so you can look at it perhaps more comfortably. Ah, and on my big screen, that's great. Then, if you want to look at this a little bit further, we have a marker bar. This marker bar is actually quite neat. So you can slide it out of its position on the Y coordinates, and with it, you can, in real time, further do some filtering inside of the graph. You don't have to go back to the list. You don't have to go back to the product tray. You can do some extra filtering in the graph. So how do we do that? Essentially, once you slide out the marker bar and you click on it, you'll get a table. In the table, you can populate further filters to narrow down the component that you're looking for. So to do that, simply enter all the values that you want and the bar will actually give you a maximum range and a minimum range on the graph itself. And it will also at the same time update the list that you previously worked on. So all the software will update in real time. Ah, okay, so the graphs give me a lot of fancy interactive features as well. Right, so we hope with this, the person that's designing can actually go through the process quite fast. Then, if you want to add more markers, you're welcome to. So you can add maybe three or four, I would say, even though you can add as many as you like, one or two seems to work really well. If you add more, then you really know what you're doing. But if you just want a basic rough idea, it's good to go up to two. Once you have selected the components that you want using this marker, you can remove some of the constraints that you put into the table and be left with only the devices that you're interested in looking at further. All right, and you said I can filter as well? Yes, you can filter as well. So as you can see in the next graph, once you have filtered, for example, your min and max inductances, the components that don't fall in the range that you want will be actually dotted lines. It means that they are there just for reference, but the ones that really are of interest to you will be solid lines, just like you see there. So you can set, just like you see here, a maximum value and a minimum value. And everything that falls within that range will be a solid line. Anything that's outside of that range will be a dotted line. What happens with this other graph that I see here? Well, let's say that you have in the product tray three components. And out of those components, you narrow it down to two. And you want to get samples of only those two. You don't need to go back to the product tray to delete the component. You can do it in real time in the graph. So as you can see there, there is a list per color of every component, and you can delete the one that you don't like, for example, in this case, the one in yellow, and you're left with the red one and the green one. And those are the two that now you can add to your card through the Mouser website, and voila, you can order your samples and be sure that those would be workable solutions for your design. Okay, this is really useful, Heberly. I can see how this could save me a lot of time, a lot of returning the wrong part and ordering the right one and waiting for that one to show up. And 
maybe even preventing a little blue smoke on my next prototype board. <laughs> so walk me through what we've talked about one more time. Sure. So definitely, you don't want to have any blue smoke, so we can definitely alleviate that. <laughs> so to do that, let me walk you through what we discussed a little bit. I think the biggest benefit of the software is that it does all its calculations in real time. So it, everything is live. So what you see is what you get. You can also use the information on the website just using the browser function. So every step that you go forward, you can erase by going backwards just using the browser functions. In addition to that, I think what's really cool about it is that if you are on the go, it doesn't matter if you are in your office, you can use your desktop, you can use your laptop. If you're at an airport, you can definitely even use your phone. So as long as you have a mobile device, you can access the software and it will give you the same functionality. Finally, I think what What's really cool about the software is that none of this data that you see there has been modeled. All has been actually collected in the lab. This is actual real information that we've collected using our measurement tools in the lab. So you can be sure that this data actually is working data that you can rely on for your designs. And just to clarify, Red Expert isn't just for inductors, right? It works for a lot of different passives. Glad that you asked this question. There are other modules available. We have expanded our selection of modules to include common mode chokes, GP ferrites, RJ45s, RF products, you name it. In the future, we'll have every single product have a module similar to the one that I've shown you today. So you'll be able to select components practically blindfolded. So it's not really necessary for you to know too much about the products, the software will guide you through the best options available. Well, I think I will click that link and check out Red Expert for myself. Well, Heberly, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for giving me the time to show you this cool software. And if you have any questions, feel free to call us. We'll answer any questions for you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can check out Red Expert for yourself. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal.